Hey guys, welcome to the next Alkine video series. So before we get started with the new reactions, I actually do want to mention one thing about the previous video. In these cases, I showed you guys alkynes, where your triple um, reduction of alkynes, where the triple bond was um, part of two car uh, between, like in the center of your molecule, almost right. It's not a terminal alkyne. So just a quick refresh on what a terminal alkyne was. If we have this molecule right here, right? Look at the carbons here. And here are part of our triple bond, and let me just here make this alkyne a little bit extended. Okay, because the triple bond is at the end of the car uh, at the end of the molecule, there isn't another carbon past the red one, so there's just an H attached there. Let's just change the color of that. Okay, so we have that carbon attached to an H. So if you wanted to draw it out with the carbons, just in case you're confused. We'd have a carbon there, carbon there, and here's your H. Now, what happens if you just want to reduce that? Now, H2PDC, we talked about it, we'll just fully reduce this. So if we have a alkyne with one, two, three, four, five carbons, we're just going to get a five carbon alkane, right? One, two, three, four, five. If we're going to use h 2 linoir, right, remember we get the cis alkene. Now, because this is terminal, right, there is no such thing as cis and trans. So if I drew this five carbon uh, product of the linoir reduction, we're going to get this compound, right? Here's our carbon one, two, three, four, five. Now, because there are two hydrogens now coming out of here, there's no way we can assign E and Z or cis and trans. Same thing if you use Na NH3 liquid, right? That usually gives us the trans al uh, alkene. It's going to give us the same thing in this case. Because there are two hydrogens here, there's no way to tell if it's cis or trans or E and Z. Okay? So I just wanted to quickly say that about if we had a terminal al alkyne, so you could use Linvar, um, Na NH3 liquid. Right, and it'll give you the same exact uh, alkene. Okay, so now onto the new stuff. So you guys learned when you're doing exam one and two, right? You guys learned about reactions of alkenes when we're talking about hydroboration or oxymercuration reduction. We can do very similar things when talking about alkynes. All right, so. What is this exactly going to be doing? Now, it's not going to be doing the, very, the exact same thing that you guys learned, but they are going to be slightly similar. Okay? So, let's say I have this alkyne right here. So, we have amount of carbons. One, two, three, four. Now, we're going to cover the oxymercuration of alkynes first. What I can write is HG2+. plus. This is mercury, right? We remember we use mercury in oxymercuration, comma, H2SO4 over H2O. All right? So now in this case, you don't need to do step one and step two like we did with oxymercuration of alkenes, right? We don't need to do that in this case. So what is this going to do? This is going to add an alcohol to the more substituted carbon of the triple bond. Now, look carefully. Um, in this case, they are equally substituted, so we can pick carbon 2 or 3. Now, it also doesn't really matter which one we pick because this is a symmetrical alkyne. That can matter when we get to terminal alkynes, all right? So, we're going to pick, let's say, carbon 2, okay? Now, what's going to happen is we're going to go through an intermediate called an enol, right? So, remember, oxymercurations add alcohols to the more substituted carbon. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick carbon 2. Okay. So here's carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. And on carbon 2, I'm going to have an OH. Now, we're not done here. It doesn't just add an alcohol. That's not, it's not as easy as a regular oxymercuration. We still have a double bond from carbon 2 to 3. 
This intermediate is called an enol. Oh, it's spelled E-N-O-L, right? We pronounce en for the double bonds, right? Like alkenes, and the all is for the alcohol. Now that's just the intermediate, all right? So this is just the intermediate. The reaction doesn't stop here. Why it doesn't stop here? It's not very favorable to have an alcohol coming off a carbon with a double bond. So what this is going to do instead, it's going to go through something called a keto-enol tautomerization. All right. You guys should definitely know what the name of this reaction, and you guys should know the mechanism of it, which is not very complicated. Okay? So what this is... So, just to quickly, so the enol is for what we have currently, and the keto is what you'll see in a second. And it's something you guys actually already know. So what this is going to do is the double bond is going to grab an H. Right? Now remember, hydrogen can only have one bond at any one time. So we're going to have to break this bond. And what's going to happen instead is this bond is going to collapse downward and form a double bond right there. So your product is going to have this double bond oxygen here and we have that H that we added right there right and just remember just to clarify we still have an H over there on that carbon so we have two H's now in carbon 3 and we're keeping the octets because on this carbon 2 we had one bond to that let's change the color one bond to the oxygen another bond to this methyl and two bonds to this carbon we're changing that double bond and we're adding a second bond there and we're removing that double bond away so the keto stands for the ketone right here we have the ketone so the ketone is much more favorable to exist than the enol intermediate so that's the final product of this reaction so what we did to summarize we just took this down and we added a ketone the more substituted carbon of the double bond. So now what happens if this is this alkyne is a little bit different? So let's say I have this terminal alkyne. So the amount of carbons we have here are one, two, three, four. Right? There's an H coming out of here. It's terminal. So what's gonna happen? So we're gonna write again HG2 plus. H2SO4 over H2O, right? So again, what's the more substituted carbon to the double bond? So now here, that's going to play a big role. We can't just pick carbon 3 or 4, because if you look at carbon 4, it has, this is the carbon in reference, it has a bond to the carbon 3, and a bond to the hydrogen, whereas carbon 3 has a bond to carbon 4, and carbon 2. So that's more carbon bonds. So we're going to react on carbon 3. So how is this going to look? So we have four carbons total. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So you're going to put your OH on carbon 3. And the double bond, 3 to 4. So that... The double bond of your enol has to be where the triple bond used to be. So if your triple bond was from 3 to 4, your enol double bond is on 3 to 4. Now again, remember, that's not very favorable. So that's just an intermediate. So what's going to happen is the double bond reaches up, grabs the H, and then this bond comes in. And we get the ketone. So again, the keto enol tautomerization. And sometimes you can just hear it as tautomerization. All right? So be careful and always make sure to put your ketone on the more substituted side of the double bond, of the triple bond. Now, we talked about here how it didn't matter if I picked carbon 2 or 3. Now let's give another example. Similar to what we had before. But now I'm changing it all up a little bit. I added one extra carbon. So let's count the carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, five okay so now what happens if we do this okay 
So we're going to have to put, uh, react with the more substituted carbon of our triple bond. Now, in this case, again, carbon 2 and 3 are equally substituted. But this compound is not symmetrical. Okay? So let's first react with carbon 2, and then do, we'll do with carbon 3, and you guys will see what I mean. So first up, let's do carbon 2. Okay? So this is a 5-carbon compound. So I'm going to just draw 5 carbons. And what's number? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the double, the, the triple bond was from carbon two and three, and we're reacting with carbon two. O H and carbon two, double bond in two to three. Then we're gonna go through the keto enol tautomerization. So I'm just gonna abbreviate that, and we're gonna get this product. Okay. What happens if I react with carbon three? So I'm gonna write that just down below. So again five carbons, but now we're putting the OH on carbon three. And the double bond is going to go from two to three. So again, keto enol tautomerization. And you get this product. So you see now, it's not the same as what we had here. In this case, we picked carbon two to react. If I reacted with carbon three, you get this compound intermediate, go through the, the tautomerization, we'd get this. That's the same exact thing as that compound, just rotated differently. Because, and that we can, that's the case because this is a symmetrical compound. In this case, it's not symmetrical, so we get a mixture of products. So always watch out for that. All right, you got to make sure, you got to see if your alkyne is symmetrical or not. Because this is going to work on the more substituted carbon the double bond, and so if it's in the uh, if it's between two carbons, your triple bond is between two carbons, between four and one in this case, we can have a mixture. Okay, so here we have two products: this one and this one. So now we're going to move on to a new reaction. Like you guys learn oxymercuration for alkenes, you also learn hydroboration of alkenes, right? And so we can do something very similar when we're talking about alkynes. We can also do a hydroboration type reaction. Okay, and it's also very similar to what you guys have seen before. It's not going to be any more different. And it's also very similar to the reaction we just did in terms of forming a alcohol and this little enol intermediate, and then doing a tautomerization to give a carbonyl compound as your final product. All right, and so we're going to do that here. Let's draw an alkyne. So I'm going to draw a terminal alkyne. Now, in this case, we have how many carbons? One, two, three. Now, here we do have to number our reagents. Your step one is going to be this weird looking molecule. Now, again, you might just want to put this on your index card so that you don't mess it up. Parentheses. And you're going to have this little weird chain. I mean, out of that is going to be BH. And right underneath, next to that parentheses, you're going to write a 2. So we have two of that, those weird-looking things. And then step 2 underneath is going to be H2O2 comma NaOH, okay? And so this is going to be, again, similar to hydroboration. So in hydroboration, we added an OH to the least substituted carbon of your uh, alkene. So we're going to do the same exact thing in this case. We're going to add it to the least substituted carbon of the alkyne. So how are we going to do this? All right, so we're going to go the least substituted carbon first. We should identify that. That's going to be carbon 3. It has a bond to a hydrogen right here. And it's bound to carbon 2. So one bond to a carbon. Carbon 2 is bound to carbon 3 and carbon 1. So we're going to want to pick carbon 3. Okay? So let's go again. 
three carbons. Oh, that's too many. So there's carbon three. And actually, let me just do it this way. So here's carbon one, two, three. So similar to before, add the OH to carbon three that we substituted carbon. Let me just move this away. And we put a double bond where our alkyne used to be. So our alkyne used to be two to three. So we put the double bond right there. So again, this is your enol intermediate. And we're going to go through the keto enol tautomerization again. So let's just move the H. The double bond reaches up to grab the H, which comes down to form the double bond. So that's going to give us this product. Right, and we had an H on carbon three, no other carbons. So in this case, we're going to get what's called an aldehyde. You see here we formed ketones when we're talking about the oxymercuration that we did. Now we're talking about, um, now we're going to create aldehydes. Now the thing is, this only works on terminal alkynes. Okay, this does not work when we're talking about alkynes like this. All right, so you got to watch out for that. This reaction only works on terminal alkynes. And they gave you a roadmap question on your workshop that uh, heavily, that relied on the fact that you were to know that um, exception, that this does not work when talking about alkynes that have carbons coming out of those triple bonds, okay? And so uh, that's how we do this reaction. So it's a little bit simpler, right? Not as much to go in in two, you can really only get one product in this case. And so that's how we do the high aggeration like mechanism. And also be careful, you have to number these, unlike when we did the oxymercuration reaction, okay? So just be very careful with that. Now, um, I will, in future videos, go over that roadmap that you guys have done. We just have not finished all the reactions that we need to yet. So we're going to finish those up in the next few videos, and I'll go over some questions from your workshop so you guys aren't confused, okay? And so I will see you guys in the next video. I hope this one helped and good luck.